Hello and welcome to the show. Today we are going to be discussing the topic of homeostasis. Homeostasis is defined as the maintenance of a constant internal environment. Here are diagrams of the skin. The sensory receptors labelled in the first diagram could be a touch receptor, pressure receptor, temperature receptor, etc. Body temperature. Humans maintain our body temperature at 37 degrees centigrade. Fat is an insulator, so when the external temperature fluctuates, it prevents our internal temperature from similarly fluctuating. This is because it traps heat inside our body and slows down the warming up of our body from an external source. When the temperature changes, temperature receptors in the skin detect this information and send it as impulses through nerves to a part of our brain called the hypothalamus. This part of our brain is in charge of maintaining constant body temperature. It works like a thermostat. It sends electrical impulses along nerves to body parts that help regulate body temperature. When the temperature rises, the hypothalamus stimulates the following. Hair to lie flat. The hair erector muscle is relaxed, allowing the hair to lie flat against the skin, so no air is trapped close to the skin, so we are insulated less. This is less effective in humans as we do not have as much body hair or fur as many animals. Vasodilation. The muscles in the wall of the arterioles supplying skin surface capillaries relax, increasing the size of the arteriolar lumen. More blood flows, so more heat can be lost to the environment from the blood at a time. Sweating. Sweat is secreted by sweat glands. It evaporates, taking heat from the skin with it, causing the body to cool down. Metabolism. Metabolism usually consists of exothermic reactions, reactions that give off heat energy. So slower metabolism means less heat is given off at a time. When the temperature falls, the hypothalamus stimulates the following. Hair to stand erect. The erector muscles contract, pulling the hair to stand up straight. This allows the hair to trap air close to the skin. As air is an insulator, it traps heat close to the skin, warming up the body. Vasoconstriction. Muscles in arterial walls contract, making the lumen smaller, so less blood travels through the skin at a time, reducing the heat loss per unit time. Reduces sweating so less sweat evaporates, making the body cool down less. Metabolism may increase. And shivering. Muscles in some parts of the body involuntarily contract and relax very quickly, producing heat as a result. Control by negative feedback. Negative feedback is when a fluctuation in a particular parameter, such as body temperature, is reduced so that it returns to its normal range of functioning by triggering a sensor that stimulates a response in an effector that reduces the fluctuation. In other words, any change is counteracted so that it returns to its set point. Examples of negative feedback systems include thermoregulation, the control of body temperature, blood glucose concentration, osmoregulation, control of blood water potential, etc. This is because any changes in any of these parameters result in the body acting so that the change is minimised and is brought back to its normal range. For example, if body temperature rises, the body will act to decrease the temperature back to 37 degrees centigrade, which is the set point of body temperature. If body temperature falls, the body will act to increase its temperature back to 37 degrees centigrade. Glucose content. 
The hormones insulin and glucagon, secreted by the pancreas, control the level of blood glucose. The hormones travel to the liver in the blood, which is the organ that controls blood glucose levels. Glycogen is a short-term storage molecule. It is a polymer made of glucose molecules. When the blood glucose level increases above its set point, the pancreas secretes insulin, which travels to the liver in the bloodstream. Insulin stimulates liver cells to absorb glucose and stimulates the conversion of glucose to glycogen. Insulin also encourages an increase in the rate of respiration. This means more blood glucose is taken up by cells and respired. All this of this reduces blood glucose levels. When the blood glucose level decreases below its set point, glucagon is secreted by the pancreas, which then travels to the liver via blood. The hormone glucagon stimulates the conversion of glycogen to glucose. This process is gluconeogenesis, and glucose is then released back into the bloodstream. This increases blood glucose levels. This is the end of the topic. Thank you for listening. We hope you found it informative. Next, we will be discussing the topic of asexual and sexual reproduction. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe for more. Until next time, take care.